everybody. What's up? It's your boy CJ. We're doing some bonus content for all you WWE wrestling fans out there. What's up, T HUD? I'm again with my third and seven boys, Mr. Jesse Jackson, heavy on the Mr. And also, again, uh, I don't know how we booked him other than just the show that he's paid for, Mr. Colin Bernier. You took a shower. That's how you booked me, dog. We are. Well, yes, and also got my hair cut yeah. and put on some deodorant. Look That's good. what they tell me. Look good. Shout out to Right Guard for not sponsoring this podcast. One of the things that we wanted to do today is give you some bonus content because we just had, not the Survivor Series, I'm drawing a blank. What just happened? Uh, oh, Crown Jewel. Mm -hmm. We just had the Crown Jewel pay-per-view event. And that got us, we're not going to do a recap here. We may do that of the Survivor Series, but we kind of wanted to go ahead and a fun topic that we wanted to kick around a little bit was our Mount Rushmore's. So your four biggest figures within professional wrestling. So we're not going to just say WWE, WCW. We're going to just say overall. Now the twist is just like we do in the archives for the third and seven boys, because it's never a bad time to talk Cowboys, 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 is we're going to go ahead and say what our heart is and then also what business is. So meaning who do we actually think is the Mount Rushmore and then who is our personal Mount Rushmore? The great thing about this is that your boy CJ and Mr. Colin Bernier, heavy on the Mr. We've been wrestling fans since we can remember. Jesse Jackson, however, watches it periodically because the boys do. And he goes to the occasional WrestleMania trip. So it's going to be great to kind of get his perspective versus ours. We also would love to get your feedback on Twitter or uh, call the voicemail. Especially you, Sherrod Boyd. We're, we're thinking of you first. So... Kind of sprung it on you a little bit. Let's just throw around some names, right, of the Mount Rushmore. And this can be managers, this can be promoters, this can be wrestlers. Now, if you want to get more specific, we can because we can do a Mount Rushmore of wrestlers. We can uh, do yeah, we, we can do different ones. I think the first one needs to be overall wrestlers. Just names at the top. Okay. The reason why I asked that is yeah. because Vince McMahon would be on mine. He does well. Yeah. He wrestled though, yeah. and he was a big heel character. Okay, never mind. I answered my own question. Go ahead. So be, before we get to throwing around names, I would like to thank our non-sponsor of the day, Wingstop. Uh, just, just tasty food, brother. They they just came out with sandwiches, the chicken sandwich craze. I think Wingstop won it. Uh, tell me your thoughts. I in the darn comments. sure think they want it. But um, those fries, it's sugary. Oh. I don't even like sweet stuff, but I'll eat it. Oh, that ranch, man. the blue cheese, get Extra real. Ranch. Extra ranch. Wingstop, holler at us one time or two times. Shout pepper. out to Rick Ross. Holler at me one Troy time or two times. Troy Aikman. Come on. Okay, uh, back to business. CJ threw around the heavyweight of wrestling, Vince McMahon. Now, I would never consider Vince McMahon a wrestler. When I think of Vince McMahon, I would never say wrestler. I would say the, the man who made wrestling what it is today and made it the biggest thing in the world. Fact. I would never put him on my Mount Rushmore for business-wise or personal because I think of him outside of that. Valid. But you got names... Bruno, you got Hulk, you got Sting, Flair, you got Cena, The Rock, Stone Cold. You know, these are the names, The Undertaker. These are the names Michaels, we're going to throw around. Michael, Bret Hart, Brutus the Barber Beef, oh. uh, 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 hey, uh, Disco Ma Inferno, Macho Man, Gilbert. We're, we're all um, big fans of all these guys, of course. You know, Hornswoggle lives in all of our hearts. But that's – we're talking about Mankind. the Mount Rushmore. There's only four that can go in. Only. Etched in stone, brother. Fact. So what? what? Uh, so so let's go – number one, you, your, your first face business and then your first face personal, Christopher Jackson. I have to go with Vince McMahon, but I'm going to take him out. So now I'm, I'm kind of – you almost want to throw Buddy Rogers in there, but his reign wasn't as long. You got to put Bruno. Yeah. You just have to put in Bruno. That that's the business, right? That's that's business. Yeah. Now for personal, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yeah. I mean, we all knew that. Yeah. Collie. So business wise, 
Um, I mean, we don't necessarily have to have different lists, but no. it, w- having the same list is boring for the listeners. I'd never do that to you. So I'm going business-wise, I got to go Hulk Hogan. WWE, WCW, WWE again. He is the face that built the place. Um, personal, you know where I'm going. You were already writing it down. Shawn Michaels. The heartbreak kid himself. The showstopper. The show The stopper. main event. Got the shirt on right now. It's Shawn Michaels. Jesse? So I'm going to break up the fun gang, and I'm going to give the same person, mm-hmm. because I am the casual fan, <clears throat> so I'm going to give, for business and for my personal list, the same guy, Andre the Giant. Ooh! Wow. One of the the foundations Mm -hmm. of one of the first true superstars. Um, I think that before the 80s, you know, where it really exploded, Mm -hmm. if you had asked the casual fan who's a wrestler, you know, you make Gorgeous George, all these other things, but Andre the Giant, I think people would have known. Also, a brilliant performance in The Princess Bride. Oh, 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 well, that's what I was going to say. Before The Rock was Hollywood's yeah. leading man, Andre the Giant was the first to cross over before yeah. Hogan, before Cena, before yes. any of these guys ever the, did it. Yeah, the guy, um, Rob Reiner, who was directing uh, Princess Bride, said, in the script, you need a giant. The book has a giant character. And when you can actually cast a real giant in that role he is amazing in that movie he is sweet he is funny um and just truly someone that i think would deserves on the business like just in pure respect of a foundation and then my personal because of the you know uh, you know that movie wow that uh. To blew our mind. That is exactly what we have you on the podcast. All right. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to do a Uno reverse. Colin Bernier, who is your business number two? And this isn't only just by ranking. I yeah, guess it yeah, is, yeah, but yeah. just. Yeah. So who's your second selection of business and then your heart? So on the second selection, business, if I'm talking about the business, we got to go to the person that really is the reason most people can get hyped up by a speech. I listen, I, I'm, I'm in sales, so a lot of people give these hype up speeches. You listen to, you know, Denzel Washington, you listen to, you know, uh, Will Smith. The, these guys tell these great stories and pump you up. It's motivation. I always snore through them. Put on a Ric Flair promo and shut up. That's all you need. Woo! Ric Flair is is the man when it comes to wrestling. You can debate the skill set and, you know, the technical fans are going to chop me up for my business Mount Rushmore because two of the least athletic wrestlers probably of all time, Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair. But when it comes to wrestling and what it meant to me and what got me into it, those were the guys that were... The guy growing up, he has to be growing up. I used to despise Ric Flair because I was a young, young kid. I wasn't, I wasn't uh mature yet, so I didn't know that Ric Flair was actually pretty darn cool. Yeah, I despised Ric Flair. They say he's the 16 time champion, he's actually like a 23 or 24 time uh champion, and he was one of the last traveling champions. Now, what that means to the for our uh audience, meaning he traveled. I think almost 350 days a year going from territory to territory, meaning going from um, state to state, country to country, putting on, they say, 45 to 60 minute matches to Colin's point. They weren't all barn burners, but he was there and he elevated so much talent. Mm -hmm. You talk about, uh, I guess, Ricky Steamboat, you talk about Sting. Both would not be, they would, because they talent rises to the top, but Ric Flair put them on well, that. That cream always rises. That, like, that's, and what's it called? Yeah. They're always going to go 
He took them to the top, though. Yeah. All right. So we That's got your business. Who's mm-hmm. your personal number two personal? Personal number two. Uh, CJ knows this better than anybody, but my personal most of my favorite matches involve this guy. My favorite promos involve this guy, minus the Ric Flair ones. And that is a guy who's really like four or five people. It's Mick Foley. It's Mankind, it's Dude Love, it's Cactus Jack, my personal favorite iteration of the character. He's ridiculous. He put his body through everything. The second Hell in a Cell match is one of my favorite matches of all time. I've watched it a million times. Never gets old. It never seems to take my breath away when I see him fall through the cage when he's not supposed to and his tooth is in his nose and he's dying. And he's and, smiling. And he's smiling and he pushes everybody off. He climbs to the top again. He's a madman. He made he cared more than anybody else. And it was evident in every match, every promo, everything he did when he stepped into the ring. Mick Foley for me. Want to give a cheap plug for non-sponsoring the podcast today. Foley is pod. If you have not checked out Mick yes. Foley's podcast, it is a must listen along with Grillin' JR. Shout out to Conrad. Those are great. If you haven't read Mick Foley's book, recently listened to it on tape or wow, on uh, audio. Tremendous. If you if you want to go and find a promo to watch just this week and you got 10 minutes, Pull up the Mankind JR interviews. That is him at his best because he's in Mankind character, but he's talking about real life situations. Great pick, Mr. Bernier. Heavy on the mister. All right, so for Christopher Jackson, for his business, he's got Bruno. So if I'm just going to go in line, I have to go. Andre is such a good one, but I'm going to have to go number two. Hulk Hogan. Okay. When it comes crashing down and it hurts inside. (laughs) Now, this is a little controversial, and I'm not trying to go there either. Hulk Hogan and Terry Bollea, to me, are two separate people. So, I know that Terry has had some whatever, but in terms of just Hulk Hogan, when you put on wrestling and you're trying to get away from the real world... Both the WCW and the WWE theme song still get that little Christopher feeling from Blockbuster and Hollywood video. It just always will. Now, for my... Hey, what did Terry have going on? I, I don't know. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Okay. You can always get Google. <laughs> um, for my second... For my second... Hall of Fame? No, my second... Personal pro- heart. For yeah. my heart, thank you. I put Stone Cold Steve Austin number two. The Rock. Gotta Did go with The Rock. you smell what The Rock is cooking? CJ, just a personal quick little story. CJ played that song, the, the Rock's theme song, probably about 347 times one night, nonstop. This was nonstop. It was actually 2014 when I told you the magical year. Yeah. We beat Detroit. Yeah. My dad was sick that day. He was working. <laughs> And he dropped us off. And remember, that was like hanging out with Kelsey. And Kelsey was like, he's going to play that song again? <laughs> remember, we went out and bought papers the next morning? Oh, uh, my gosh. That was a big deal. And also, WrestleMania 17. The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin. My father and I in the Houston Astrodome. Real quick for you listeners out there. It was 2001. I forget which grade I was in, but I saw that WWE was coming to Houston, Texas at the Astrodome for WrestleMania 17. Well, I've got a Stone Cold uh, poster in my room, a t-shirt. I've got a Rock jersey poster, t-shirt. Because if you remember wrestling fans, Stone Cold held, excuse my language, the wrestling world by the balls until they ran him over because he needed to go get surgery. By the way, Owen Hart, we're going to do another uh, podcast. He meant to drop him on his head. I got I got facts to prove it. But The Rock just came. I mean, he was such a bad guy that he came into to be one of the best be- good guys. So I remember in 2001, so I'm 10 or 11. Yeah. I don't know who to pick. So I go to my parents. Is there any way that we could go to WrestleMania? My parents say, you know what? I'll make a deal with you. If you get straight A's on your next report card, we'll buy you WrestleMania tickets. 
Sure enough, that report card came. I remember it like it was yesterday in a brown envelope, had my name on it, and I got all freaking A's. There wasn't even one B. First and only time I got all A's. But I remember my parents actually gave me the tickets, and then I learned later on down the road that they bought the tickets actually before my report card came out. So that is always just going to be a special place in my heart. So with that, I'm going to have to go with Stone or uh, Stone Cold number one for my heart, The Rock number two. Now, all right, let's go ahead, Mr. Bernier. Hey, Jay, wait, Jay Dub, I don't got nothing. Second. No love. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's all right. All right, so we'll do that. We'll fix that in post. Business, Mr. Uh, Jack, Mr. Jackson. What are your heart and business? So business. I'm going to go Mean Gene Okerlund. Hey. The voice of wrestling on TV. I think he was the initial start going. Um, he, you know, you've seen all those videos when you watch the history, like with Cindy Lauper and MTV and all the works with that, you know, was a great documentary of how part of the reason why wrestling became cool is because MTV was playing him and everything. So I think he is worth, you know, you've you've got a a actual performer. Now you have someone that's on the entertainment side voice. And so that's why I would pick him for personal. I'm going to go Mr. Ross because this is Chris's favorite guy. They are. Uh, he has listened to the books. He's He told me to go buy a book. It is, you know, we had to buy his barbecue sauce, his seasonings. Uh, that is, um, you know, Chris Week goes with, he listens to the podcast. And if it's, you know, if it's not Conrad, if it's not Jim, he's unhappy. So that would buy do. I, so I would go uh, Jim Ross as number two. First of all, Jesse Jackson has got the best list out here right now. <laughs> wow. Okay. Man, loving this. Okay. Mr. Bernier, number three. No, no, no. We did the Uno. So you. Who's hosting here? Oh. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. It's so hard for me. All right. Mr. Bernier, we got. Heart and business. Number uh, three. On this one, I am going to go with the same person for both. I'm going to steal Jesse Jackson's move, his Uno reverse card from the first round, and go the n number three who has left an impact on the business and in my personal life is Mark Calloway. The Undertaker, the Dead Man, we've seen the iterations throughout the years. Of an old school Undertaker to the Dead Man to the cult leader to the American Badass back to this demon. I think he told the story better than anybody else I've ever seen in wrestling. I was scared. I was pissed off. I was happy. There were he made you feel emotions every time he came out. He made us almost lose our voices at WrestleMania this past year. I got the hat on. Yes. So it, what about like, Paul the, Bear? Oh, yeah, yes. yeah. I mean, that's shout out to LJ. That's a, that to me, I always bring that. Like DX is a part of HBK. Everybody from the Brood to Paul Bear is part of the Undertaker, and I think bringing other people along with you for the ride and elevating other people's career is what he did better than anybody else. I think he exemplifies what a professional wrestler is. That's why business-wise, heart-wise. 30 years. 30 years Crazy. on top. Crazy. And he had to work with Giant Gonzalez. The, uh, I'm, I'm getting his name wrong. Not the great Muda. Uh, the, the great Kali. Right. The Never mind the fact the matches he had with Shawn Michaels, Rey Mysterio. Him and Austin didn't have that good of matches for whatever reason. But that is a. I'm actually gonna go for business. It's got to be Stone Cold Steve Austin, number three. Now I don't really want to put him in there. I do because I have to. It's Stone Cold. His run only lasted about two or three years of on top, on top, and that ain't just what are they called? It's called white uh, heat. If you will. He was white hot. He wasn't red hot. He was white hot. 
He was riding that on a Thunderbolt. Stone Cold Steve Austin is what defeated the WCW and also got Vince McMahon and the WWE to be a publicly traded company. So number three has got to be Stone Cold Steve Austin. Now, from a heart, number three is Sting. Man called Sting. He was my first babyface hero. Uh, I liked him maybe right before Pudge Rodriguez. I'm talking Hollywood video, blockbuster, Sting. The only guy that never went to WC or ne- never went to WWE. Now, he did in his later years go to w- WWE. He had that very unforgettable run, but I'm such a mark that I still liked him being in the WWE because I'm one of the wrestling fans. I don't watch wrestling. I watch WWE. That's just how I am. So Sting coming into there was huge for me, even though he did the job to Triple H. You can ask anybody and their mother. Sting is always going to be my Pudge Rodriguez, my number one. Shout out to Sherrod Boyd. We went to a TNA taping at University of Arlington. Uh, our U- U- UT Arlington and Sting was in TNA and everybody was losing their mind. WCW champ, NWA champion, WCW champion, TNA champion, should have been WWE champion. He's in AEW now. The guy's career is phenomenal. All right, so number three, uh, for business, I am going to steal one of yours. In fact, Hulk Hogan. He is... Nowadays, it, you know, I think a lot of times if someone says name a wrestler, Hulk Hogan is going to be on the list. Like probably Rock, probably Stone Cold, but there, there was one time, I mean, he was in a Rocky movie, for God's sake. He was just, he was everywhere on commercials. The whole brother and ripping the shirt. I mean, there he is an icon, and you guys have already talked a lot about that. Hulk makes it for business reasons for personal and Chris knows where this is coming you know Bret Hart the excellence of execution yeah I had no interest in wrestling in fact I was criticized sometimes like you let your kid watch this eh you know he knows the rules you can't uh, you can't use language as long as you don't use the language and use the violence in real life you can watch it Chris said Dad, I think you'll like this documentary. He did. He made me watch the Bret Hart documentary. Wrestling with Shadows. And I was fascinated by it because it was the first time in my unexperienced world where it was very clear I'm on stage and I'm off stage. I'm two separate characters. I am... You know, for the longest time, right, the whole, um, you don't break the secret that things are pre, you know, pre-scripted. Yeah, you don't kill kayfabe. Yeah, and then this was, he just talked about it, and I just was fascinated by this guy. I liked him, and I enjoyed him, and he became, if someone asks me, who's your favorite wrestler? I'd go, the only one I really know is Bret Hart, and I love him. Then you find out that there are many that say he was one of the best, not necessary characters, but at execution, at technique, one of the best there is. You know, you could throw it back to football. There are showy players, and then there are players like an offensive lineman that are so good, like Zach Martin, right? Like he's had no penalties. He just has been consistently good footwork, good hands, good technique. So that would be my personal choice. Love that. The best there is, the best there was, and the best Best there there ever will be. be. Yes. All right, folks, we are coming around the turn. Yeah. Let's go with Christopher Jackson. All right, Mr. Jackson, heavy on the mister. Who is your number four in terms of business? All right. Well, you boy CJ's got Bruno San Martino, Hulk Hogan, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and number four, ugh, tough. I wanted to go Ric Flair. Should have gone John Cena. Have to go The Undertaker. 30 years. One of, if not the best character 
in WWE history. Got to go with The Undertaker. Yeah. Now, for my heart, I got Stone Cold Steve Austin. I could put Stone Cold one through four, quite frankly. Yes. Stone Cold Steve Austin. And as you talked about it, this Hallmark podcast... They were talking about it, and this guy had Undertaker. He had everything, and one of the hosts said, oh, well, you got it wrong. It's Diamond Dallas pa- Page 1 through 4. 1 through 4, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes, DDP. Shout out yeah. DDP Yoga for not sponsoring the podcast. Yeah. Number one on my heart is Stone Cold Steve Austin. Number two, The Rock. Number three, Sting. Number four was so difficult, but then I thought about it, and it wasn't. Number four for me is the heartbreak kid, Shawn Michaels. He put in that work when he was a youngin' with the Rockers. He turned on Marty. Marty never recovered. If you look at interviews, just kidding. But then Sean also, shout out to Sherrod Boyd and Colin Bernier. I like ass at a hole, Sean. 1996, 1997. I like that attitude. I liked what he brought to the product. He dropped the title to Austin. I think that shows that he's willing to do business. But then he came back in 2002 and had that match with Triple H at SummerSlam. And then he won the world title. But then he cut his hair, right, Sherrod? But Shawn Michaels is just the best in-ring... I know this goes without saying. The best in-ring performer that there probably ever is. And also, it's my my uh, best friend, my brother, Colin Bernier's favorite. So, I've, I've always watched him and just... He's just... I gotta put him down as my number four. So. JW has been probably the best on these picks, so we're going to go Colin Bernier, number four on your business and your heart, Wrestling Mount Rushmore. Uh, so with mine, if you look at mine, it, it, it looks at who took the wrestling business to the next level. I think Hope did that, Flair did that, Taker did that, and I think this guy was never the best wrestler, had a lot of great matches, though, Held the title for a long time. Catchphrases and sayings and shirts and merch and uh, started a whole nother show. And is now the highest paid actor in Hollywood. Dwayne The Rock Johnson is still doing a lot for the business. People who are now like young kids who never watched wrestling watch The Rock in promos. And he says something about a wrestler because it's 2022. You can go in. Just watch a couple YouTube videos as him as a wrestler. Like, oh my God, he had the crazy noodle hair and he had this stupid things on his shoulders. And then he was The Rock and he started SmackDown. The Rock elevated wrestling and continues to do that right now. Know your role and shut your mouth. All right, number four on your heart. You got HBK, Mankind, and Undertaker. I mean, with this, you could go The Rock. You could go Stone Cold. You could go KO. You could go, you know, Sting. I could go Diesel, Nash, uh, Razor All. Ramon, All. R.I.P. Yeah. But I have to go with my father's favorite wrestler. Always held a special place in my heart. And his son holds a special place in our heart now. Dusty. Road, the, the American, American dream. Dream with the polka dots. Son of a, a plumber. Big boy, son of a plumber. He was he was the antithesis of Ric Flair, the high flying, jet flying, Rolex wearing. He was the other guy, and he was everybody's favorite. He was a man of the people, and he and he lived that way. He was a pioneer in the wrestling industry. He brought along a million people. He helped out everybody. His sons created a huge legacy, Gold Dust, uh, Cody with AEW, and then coming to WWE. That family, w- without Dusty Rhodes, wrestling would be very, very different than it is today. That is a really good... I did not see that one coming until you said Keys. Of course, Dusty Rhodes. The American Dream, the son of a plumber. To Colin's point, he was huge in, in NXT, which NXT is the developmental league for the WWE. Uh, John Cena. I'm sorry. John Cena was already up there. Roman Reigns, Dean Seth Ambrose, Rollins. Seth Rollins, Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair. The Big list e. goes on. Big E. New Day. The list goes on and on. I love that pick. The American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. All right. And my personal favorite, I wanted to put uh, Gold Dust in there, but Colin already got it. So, all right. Drum roll, please. 
Mr. Jackson, you have been on fire. Well, Let's hear your number four on business and your heart. This is a Mount Rushmore of wrestling, not Mount Rushmore of good guys or strong characters or even necessarily good businessmen or whatever. But I believe if you're going to do a Mount Rushmore... Vince McMahon has to be on there. He he took all these regional wrestlings and f- made it into one, you know, big conglomerate. He he has screwed many a people, and I do not. I would not want to be friends with him. And I don't know if he's a good guy or just a pain in the ass. Let's not even talk about all the off the off the mat off the mat stories. So one thing we Vince hear. has always been uh, very fair in terms of compensation. That doesn't mean that what you said. Yeah. But he's also screwed a lot of people out of compensation as well yeah. too. So he's a very controversial figure. Right. But and, it's a very very good cho- choice. Yeah. And so. Um, I thought about trying to cheat and do, because I've tried to do, you know, mirror images of each other. So I thought about doing Stephanie and Triple H kind of as a combo, Mm -hmm. as a power couple. That would work. Uh, Because the more I see them on behind the scenes, the more I just like both of those people. Uh, They have a good persona. But I've got to go with um, Mick Foley for no other reason then my favorite story is Chris Jackson and I were in the car driving to Ticket Stock. And for those of you not in the Dallas area, the ticket is the sports station we listen to. And they would routinely do, basically, it's, it's a big convention. And they would bring in celebrities. They still do celebrities to give free autographs. And they would do broadcasting live. And they were interviewing Mick Foley that night. And he talked about Sportatorium in Dallas. He wrestled in Dallas. He was talking about he always had affection with Dallas. And he told the story that his girlfriend at the time came to him and said, Mick, is wrestling real? And he said, why are you asking? She says, because you're in a winner, you're in winner takes all loser leave towns match today and everything you own is in your station wagon (laughs) (laughs) and he laughed that mick foley laugh and um also the rumor is he is a huge bruce springsteen fan so he is on my list of people i want on set lusting bruce he has also reinvented himself you say there are multiple characters Colin talked about that, right? There is Mankind. There is Mr. Sacco. There is actually Mick Foley himself. Uh, It just, he has, and he has put his body through so much. I do not think he is, I would hate to have been a family member of his because I think he put wrestling in his body ahead of his family. But, he just seems like the best dude. Like, you know, we watched some of these A&E specials and he's like, tell you what, you know, he's trying to get something for them to donate it. He said, tell you what, next uh, WrestleMania or next pay-per-view event, I'll come to your house. I'll watch it with you. I'll make WWE buy pizza. And the family went crazy. And I'm like, yeah, how cool would that be yeah. to have him in your living room talking to and go oh you know see what that is that was this move or that so yeah so that would be my remember we took we watched that the a and e hidden treasures and you asked me would you do that i said in a heartbeat yeah i'd invite sherrod colin uh you and me and we'd have mankind dude love aka cactus jack yeah in the building how much fun would that be yeah shout out to mick foley uh foley is pod definitely come on the podcast with oldie talk some bruce springsteen all right, fellas, this has been a lot, a lot of fun. So I'm curious, Chris, because you took it down. Did anyone make all three lists? No, no. Hulk Hogan made Christopher's, Hulk. Collins, 
and, and mine. Jesse Jackson's. And that's all business, though. Yeah, okay. So, good. All so business. Go Nobody and- on the heart side had all three of us, but yeah. at least all of us... Could agree on Vince, and then we actually put yeah. Hulk. And, and you guys actually said at the yeah. beginning that yeah. you know if we were we were talking about not just wrestlers, and you know I went a little different. I'm like okay, wrestling as an announcer, as a business guy, and a couple of um, performers. So yeah, great. Thank you. Love it. That's All right, so let's do a podcast. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you for the suggestion. We and got idea. a real quick recap, and we want to hear your feedback online. Let us know. Come up with your own list. Colin Bernier for the business. Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair, Undertaker, and The Rock. Personally, the Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels, Mankind, Undertaker, and the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. Shout out to Cody. Christopher Jackson, Bidness, Bruno San Martino, Hulk Hogan, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and The Undertaker. CJ's Heart, Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, Sting, and the Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels. The man with the power, the man of the hour, probably one of the coolest lists I've ever, ever seen, especially coming from my dad. This was such a pleasure. For his Bidness, Andre the Giant, Mean Gene Okerlund, Hulk Hogan, and Vincent Kennedy McMahon. For his heart, Andre the Giant, the great Jim Ross, the best there is, the best there was, the best there ever will be, Bret Hart, and the three faces of Foley, Mick Foley, Mankind, Dude Love, Cactus Jack himself. Fans, we want to know what you think. Let us know. Yeah, that's it. Thanks, everyone. Ciao. Appreciate Ciao. it. Bye. Seen a one-trick pony and you see me.